The Killer is one of the best movies of the year, and recently I've been talking a lot about Marvel and Star Wars, and I've had enough. I can't do that anymore because I might just go insane. So today, I wanted to switch things up and talk about something actually worth your time. And if for some reason you have not seen The Killer, or this is your first time hearing about it, please, I beg of you, go watch this movie right now. It's on Netflix, it's not even two hours long, please just take that time and just soak in every ounce of this awesomeness. You know when people talk about, oh, that movie was really good, I really liked like that? Well, this is the movie they were talking about. Now, I have a lot to say about this. Quite literally, everything about the film is amazing, but outside of that, I've never really experienced this level of connection with a film before. And I don't know what it is, but this just agrees with me. And when I first heard this was being made, I knew this was going to be great. David Fincher making a thriller about an assassin? I mean, that's a match made in heaven. And then all the trailers started coming out, and it solidified that even more. This quickly became one of the only movies I was excited for all year, and oh my god, did it deliver. Now, I will admit, this movie isn't that crazy. There isn't some super elaborate story. It's pretty straightforward, but it's done in a way where you get sucked in. We got this guy and he wants revenge. And regardless of how simple the concept may be, you are along for the ride. Because this is what David Fincher is good at, at sucking you into some other world. You aren't watching this for the plot, you are watching this movie for David Fincher, for his meticulous attention to detail. You give the same project to any number of directors, you get the same grey, emotionless snooze fest. But not with Fincher. The level that this guy takes it to is almost a character in and of itself. You feel him in the movie, even if a scene is deathly quiet. Even if no one is speaking, even if there's no music, you are still hooked into this experience. This is what I've been looking for. This level of escapism that traps you in the world and only lets you go once the movie is over. Every scene has a purpose. Every shot, every angle was for a specific reason, to incite some sort of emotion. Nothing was left to chance, and I love that. I love that obsession that Fincher has to filmmaking. The sound design is just as intricate as the cinematography. A large portion of the film is quiet. The main character barely speaks, most of the film is littered with inner monologues, but they work so well. They play into this idea of contradiction, directly opposing the main character's actions. The things he is saying don't always line up with what he's doing. The movie begins with him saying he's not like the many, he's one of the few, he's above the other people, above the normies, he doesn't give a fuck. But the whole movie is him giving a fuck. Once his personal life is targeted is when things unwind. Before this, all the killing was just work. And now, it's different. Now, he isn't hunting for money, but for revenge. And for the duration of the movie, he tries to convince himself that it's the same thing. But as the movie goes on, as the chapters roll by, he slowly accepts the fact that they are different. And he's doing this for someone he cares about, to protect his humanity, his home life. We start to see him feel that anger. He begins to lean into that emotion. This is a character that doesn't fly any flag, doesn't believe in anything, except the job. He tells us how cold, how calculated he is. But after it all went down, he looks nervous. He starts battling with paranoia. This whole moped scene, or him huffing and puffing in the helmet, or even thinking this guy was out to get him, or even the dog at the airport, these are all things that point to this idea of the mask slipping. It's as if he has to keep repeating this mantra to himself to believe it. Empathy is weakness. Weakness is vulnerability. He's repeating this to try and solidify it, but it's not working, essentially contradicting everything he has said, and will continue to say throughout the rest of the movie. And the ending was kind of weird. It took me a little to understand what really happened, or what the killer was trying to say. The final lines of the film is him accepting that his death is imminent due to his life choices. But he's not scared. He accepts it, because he is with the woman he loves, supported via the Smiths. To die by your side is such a heavenly way to die. Also, the final shot of the movie is him closing his eyes, which further supports this idea of acceptance. For the entire movie, he never really blinks. For the most part, he always has his guard up. Until the end. Once he accepts his fate, which is really more the consequences of his actions. Or, another idea is that there is nobody coming after him, and he's just a guy accepting his humanity instead of trying to bury it. Or, he's accepting that he's also another cog of the machine. He is one of the many, trying to reclaim his humanity. But I want to talk about the cinematography 
for a little bit. You guys know me, I'm a harlot for cinematography, but there's only one scene in particular that I really want to talk about, because it proves why David Fincher is the best at what he does. And if you can believe it, it's a fight scene. It's the only one, but it's done so well that you think you were fighting. The way this scene is shot makes it feel more organic, if that makes sense. The camera jolts with every hit, it slams with the characters. You feel that action, like it's happening to you. There's a weight behind the fight. You feel the size of this brute charging like a bull. It's a more realistic depiction of violence. Neither of these two guys are really doing any crazy martial art. They're just throwing things at each other, but it works. It's what you would expect a fight to look like. Them grabbing whatever they can to try and one-up the other. This isn't some Marvel movie where the bad guys are just punching bags. This is real. A guy gets hit with a lamp, he gets back up. He isn't out cold. This isn't a one and done. Most of the fight, we only really see the silhouettes of the actors. The scene is very dimly lit, and the few brief seconds of light help accentuate the brute's crazy size. There's so much detail in just the fighting that it spits in the face of the competition. They also never really show the face of the brute, ever. Before the fight, it was always from a distance. We saw his leg or the back of his head. During the fight, the scenes are very dark, or his face is covered in blood, but we never really see what he looks like. And this was definitely done on purpose, to give this character an almost animalistic appearance. Like when I try to picture him in my head, all I'm seeing is a muscly silhouette. He doesn't have a face. And whenever he's described, it's always as this crazy, raging monster. And the dude with her? Should have kept him on the leash. He was a scary mother. Now, is this how the main character sees this other person? Is this his perspective? How he disassociates for work? Does him not considering the other person a human make his job easier? Or was this a director thing, to give the movie a little more nuance? Or was this totally on accident? I don't know that answer, but it's nice that we have the ability to ask questions. Not everything is laid out flat for us. I don't want to watch a movie and forget about it the next day. I want there to be different interpretations of what the message really is. Is this movie about reclaiming? Claiming your humanity. What is really going on here? And pairing Fincher's cinematography with the sound design just elevates this movie to the next level. If it's the storytelling via the Smiths or how dynamic the music is, everything is perfect. The only downside that I can even slightly begin to notice with this movie is the lack of focus on his personal life. The only time we see any sense of a relationship with another person is at the hospital. If we got a few scenes to help solidify these two together, it would have added a little more weight to that revenge angle. I would have felt a little more connected to the killer. Now I've thought about this a lot, longer than I should have. If I were to restructure the movie, I would add one scene. After the killer returns to his hideout, I'd have him spend time with his girlfriend, just for a little bit to help build up that emotional appeal. You know, to give this relationship a little time to breathe. And essentially, the story would continue continue the same way as it did before. Maybe the killer pops out to the shops to buy food or whatever, I don't know, I'm not a writer, but for some reason have him leave the house. He comes back and finds his girlfriend half dead on the floor. He takes her to the hospital, bada bing bada boom, the story flows just as it did before. And when I say flow, I mean flow, the film flies by, and that's in part due to the chapters, which help pace the film incredibly well. This would also help with the killer's final lines in the movie, this idea of feeling secure. This would play on that, and by the end, he would accept that once again, he's one of the many. And the more I think about it, the more I feel robbed of an experience. This movie was made for the theater, for the largest screen, for the best speakers. And Netflix, in their infinite wisdom, decided, you know, we have this great movie, with a great director are attached, but we also really hate our audience, so we're gonna release this in select theaters for about a week, and then throw it on our streaming service and have our compression systems ravage the quality, just because we love our audience so much. You know, now that I'm sitting here, I kind of regret not driving an hour away to the closest theater that was actually playing this movie. You know what's crazy? Not a single theater in my state was playing this movie. I would have to drive to a different state. That, that, uh, why? why? Why is that a thing that I would have to do? I really don't get why Netflix wouldn't give this a full theatrical run. Were they scared of the money they were gonna make, or were they not confident in the movie? Uh, well, really what it is, is that they wanna kill the movie theater industry. They are limiting their theater releases to a week or less than a week to try and grab audiences and redirect them to Netflix. It's kinda sad. In the grand scheme of things, movies were made for the movie theater, and now these money-hungry studios wanna get rid of it because streaming might 
might be more profitable. But that's a different video entirely. I just want more of this world. I want to see more of these characters. This is making me want to watch more of David Fincher's work. I've seen some of his movies, but not all of them. Maybe I make a, a David Fincher ranked video. I don't know. I'll put it on the list. But the killer is just awesome. We've seen revenge stories before, but I don't care. Fincher is able to transform the subject matter into something magical. It's not about who does it first, it's about who does it the best.